Uh, have you heard of the uh, synod of senility? <laughs> the synodality actually is what it's called, but I like to call it the synod of senality or senility. Um, <clears throat> this coming month, October, the Roman Catholic Church is going to be conducting a holy synod to re-examine some of their stands and can we make some compromises and to reach the new generation. Yeah, it's called going woke. And a lot of the Catholics, the traditional Catholics, are very upset about it and all shook up about it. And this could be the end of our church and everything else. Um, and they should be upset because their uh, Jesuit Pope is making a real mess of their church. And But I just want to address a few things in this little video here. Um, one of which is, you know, I know a lot of Catholics watch this channel. And you guys really need to drop your pride, your self-righteous pride. You know, you like to rip on Protestants and say oh, that there's 30,000 Protestant denominations and whatever else, um, but yet you turn a blind eye to the fact that your church is filled with strife and division. You try to make it look like, well, Christ's true church wouldn't have all the strife and division, yet your church has strife and division. Uh, the Pope trying to get rid of the Latin Mass, there's all kinds of other things, you know. Um, you know, they want to ordain women and and uh, be okay with sodomite marriage and all kinds of stuff like that. You guys have just as many problems as the quote-unquote Protestants do. And I call myself a Protestant because I protest the abuses of Rome, um, but I'm not part of the Protestant Reformation. Let me make that very clear. I would be called a heretic in the Catholic system. I'm not uh, seeking to reform the abuses or the, the problems of Roman Catholicism. I just abandon it altogether. But... Uh, you know, I want to make some very good points here that I think everybody should listen to, including the Catholics. And that this synod thing as it comes out, and it's going to be bad, it's going to be very wicked, and I'm sure it's going to be incredibly vexing, and maybe they'll have more of the weird dancers over there at the Vatican or something. You know, they like to do that. These very strange people in costumes and whatever else, and immodestly dressed women and things. Uh, I don't know how you Catholics put up with it and you stay there. But um, you really need to stop calling the Pope Holy Father. You really do. I mean, it, it always blows my mind how you can clearly contradict the Scriptures. I realize your new versions, your Catholic versions, are rewritten to cover up the sin. Um, but the Lord Jesus Christ said that we're not supposed to call a man the title of Father, as in a religious title. Let me read the scripture for you here. Matthew chapter 23 and uh, verse 9 and 10 here in my little miniature Bible. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master even Christ. Now the Catholic New Versions will say, you know, that you're not to call any man teacher. Um, but a teacher is a real title. See, they kind of mess that one up. Um, and they still have teachers in Catholic schools, parochial schools and whatever else. Uh, why don't you just leave the words of Jesus Christ alone and uh, go with the Bible, the greatest Bible that's ever been. That's the King James Bible. And you know, right now, if you actually followed what Jesus said, you wouldn't be calling this wicked Pope Holy Father. I mean, that's kind of a messed up thing to call a guy that's just completely destroying traditional Roman Catholicism. I mean, I don't understand how you can call a guy like that the Holy Father when he is just a complete total devil. You say, well, he's probably the anti-pope. Okay, then stop calling him Holy Father. Stop submitting to him. Should be fairly obvious. Let me show you a tree over here, nice red maple. Really neat how it's changing colors. It's one of the first trees that changes here in the north. But uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, let me go there next. Some, you know, oh, the Roman Catholic Church is the church that Christ founded. There's a number of scriptures that just completely blow Roman Catholicism right out of the water. You don't have to be a Protestant reformer to see it either. You can be a Roman Catholic. Even the Catholic Bibles contradict a lot of the Catholic traditions. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, Amen. The man, Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2, 5. Let me get my finger here to it. 
right above my thumb there. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. Or you can go out and get a King James Bible. Read it for yourself. Um, there's one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. Not Pope Francis, not Pope John Paul II, Pope Pius XII, Pope John I, Pope Clement, Pope, 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 Pope. No, Jesus Christ. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. The old hymn goes, you know, Protestant hymn, you wouldn't know that as a Catholic. Um, the arm of flesh never fails you and as a Catholic. Just uh, It does, but it doesn't really, and you just kind of have to go along with it and whatever else. So this synod that's coming out, I saw a thing where the some cardinal came out and he said this could be the death of the Catholic Church. This could be very serious. We don't know what we're going to do. It could cause a great schism and everything. Well, if it does cause a great schism, what are you going to do as a Roman Catholic? You see, I'm a born-again Christian. My belief is that I'm supposed to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, him and me, one mediator between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. I don't need a priest. I don't need a pope. I don't need a pastor over me. Some special man with a position that I just don't dare question him and I just bow to his feet and whatever else. That's the main reason I'm a Protestant, by the way, too. I identify as a Protestant, not in the modern identify movement either, because I protest things. I see evil, I see wickedness. If I was a Roman Catholic, I'd be protesting what Pope Francis is doing and I wouldn't be calling him Holy Father. And you better think about that. You better stop calling that wicked man Holy Father. You know what? And another thing Catholics should be doing, Catholics should be trying to get rid of the Jesuit order. Back in the 19th century, the Catholic Church did it. Disbanded the Jesuits because they make a lot of trouble. They use the Catholic Church and your faith and your religious practices as a political tool to make things happen, to go after the heretics, to take control of nations. So uh, the Synod of Synodality is going to be coming out here this coming month. And um, my prayer is that some Catholics actually wake up. Just as a lot of Catholics woke up during the papal pandemic interdict, that happened a few years ago and you saw how your church hierarchy set aside your religious beliefs for political reasons. I hope that you realize that uh, your system is political. Jesus Christ didn't come to found a political system. Jesus Christ came to found a group of believers, born again people, people that have a changed life, people that are different than the lost world out there. Um, not because we have special places to get buried and get married and all the other stuff and special church buildings to go and help finance and do good deeds and whatever else. Lord didn't, he didn't institute that stuff. All right. Um, that that's the main thing that you're supposed to be part of and you can't ever speak against it because you get kicked out and then you can't have your good funeral benefits or something or health insurance or whatever. That's not what the Lord set up. So uh, if you're a Roman Catholic... I pray that you would seriously take a look at what's coming because there's a there's coming a storm to you okay and stop the self-righteous thing of boy you protestants you don't have it together you need to join the church that christ founded and we don't have the problems that protestants do and whatever else you're going to see about that real soon you're going to see your uh, pope your jesuit pope and he's going to submit to all the woke nonsense and he's going to be saying that we should maybe redo the you know, the scriptures, or we should, I don't even know what the guy's going to do, but they'll come out with something, something that's an abomination. And you see, I can look at anybody out there. This guy identifies as a King James Bible believer. And uh, remember years ago, there was a guy, um, a Baptist pastor, King James only Baptist pastor, and he molested a friend of mine at the time. He molested his two eight-year-old daughters. And I, I had to defend the preacher because, after all, he's a holy preacher. And I had to say, oh, please leave the, the Holy Father alone. No, I didn't. I helped the guy uh, uh, help pay for his court costs to take that pastor to uh, court and get him in jail. And he went to jail. And there you can see the highbush cranberries over here. Look pretty neat. But uh, that's what I did. You think I'm going to defend church hierarchy when they're satanic and when they're wicked? 
No, you see, I'm not a Catholic. I'm not a, I don't have a universal religion, one size fits all. Uh, no, I'm a Protestant. Um, I will protest abuses. And uh, you're going to find yourself in a very similar situation if you believe in traditional Catholicism. You're going to find a very big schism coming in your church here. You say, but this has been prophesied. We're, we have the anti-pope and then the real one comes after that. Oh, you mean the Antichrist? That comes to restore order to the Roman Catholic Church, to the fractured church, and all the world will worship him because he's going to appear as Jesus Christ? Yeah. That's what the real uh, prophecy for the future is there. So, if you're a Roman Catholic, I pray you take heed to this. At least think about it, okay? Because you're, you have about a, maybe a month. And I think things are going to start to get really nutty here too, by the way. So having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is go of going, going to be of utmost importance. And if you don't have that true personal relationship with the Lord, um, you're not going to make it through. Or at least I'll say you'll have a very hard time making it through what's coming to this world. So, love to see the autumn collars out here. Um, and it's a good thing that Roman Catholics can look at the same creation that I look at and say that uh, Jesus created all things. Um, who created all things by Jesus Christ, the Bible talks about. That's good. But you can't say that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't say that. You can think it, but you can't say it. You can't know that you're going to go to heaven when you die with your system. Um, because your system can be shut off just like that if the politics of the time dictate that that happens. That's a bad place to be. And you're going to see some very disappointing things from this uh, synod of the senile uh, papists. So I hope some of you wake up. I really do. Uh, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.